Well, blessed Thursday to you as we come with your daily encouragement. And uh, we are kind of getting into some highlighted uh, Bible verses that will highlight our Sunday morning messages today. And uh, one of the things that is interesting about the messages we've got coming is that we have um, a study about the question about whether God has orphaned his people. Has God let them to be um, destroyed by the things of this world? Have we fallen into such desperation that we cannot be assured that we have God's presence with us? And so in our gospel lessons, we've been talking about Jesus sending an advocate, a comforter, usually interpreted as the Holy Spirit that comes alongside of us. But God is not the only, does not just leave it to just the Holy Spirit. There have been other times of God's rescue. And uh, our second lesson on Sunday concerns uh, 1 Peter 3, in which the description of God's rescue is that of Noah on the ark. And so we're going to go through a few of those uh, passages concerning Noah's ark. And uh, that will complement the whole idea that God is a rescuer. He does not just leave us on our own. He has provided a way for us to be rescued from the things of this earth. And so in Genesis chapter 6, beginning with verse 5, it says, The Lord saw the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made humankind on the earth, and it grieved him into his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings that I have created. People together with animals and creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. These are the descendants of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God, and Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jepheth. And the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence, and God saw the earth was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted it, and ways upon the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Now I am going to destroy them along with the earth. Make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits. The width, 50 cubits. And the height, 30 cubits. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above. And put the door of the ark on its side. Make it with the lower, a second, and third decks. For my part, I am going to bring a flood of waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which there is breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you and your sons, your wife and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be made male and female, and the birds according to their kinds, and the animals according to their kinds, and every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind, two of every kind shall come into you and to keep them alive. Also, take with you every kind of food that is eaten and store it up, and it shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this, and he did all that God had commanded him. Now, it is always interesting to read stories that I know we are probably very familiar with. And maybe we notice some things about them that are uh, different, some details about it. But what I want to focus on is the rescue that is happening. Now, for many of us, 
We don't need a physical rescue as Noah did. The rules of nature seem to be following pretty well what God had created them to be. We still need nature. We need gravity. We need there to be dry land in order to live. And we need to make sure that the water still is uh, keeping its boundaries. But we know, and we are accustomed to, floodings here and there. And in the uh, way Genesis describes flooding, it is the reversal of God's order. It is the beginning of chaos that was at the beginning of creation. And in the beginning of creation, it says that there was a formless void. And God brings order to that formless void. But what happens when there is no solid ground to stand on? We needed a rescue. And so Moses is called with very specific details how to build a ship. Now, some historians have had fun with uh, looking at the details of how the ship was built. In fact, we know in Kentucky there is a what, what many consider a exact duplicate or replica of the ship that Noah built. Although I will ironically put that even this ship needed flood insurance during one of Kentucky's big floods. But that's a discussion for another day. What we do have with this ship is a reminder that God sometimes calls us to band together, to do a specific rescue for a specific time and place. And that's what the Noah uh, Noah's Ark symbolize, if not manifest. If it wasn't for Noah's Ark, truly all flesh would have been destroyed. And it was by God's grace that Noah and his family, it was by God's grace that Noah took at least two animals into the ark. Now, we may speculate on all day why Noah was considered righteous. We may speculate all day why some seem to respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ and why others do not. Those are things that we're not permitted of knowing all the details. But what is the suffice to say is that there was enough people to bring into the ark. There was enough people and they were considered by God one worthy of rescue. Now we'll know after the story that they too fell into sin, but there is the desire to bring order. And what God seemed to have said is that there was already such violent chaos in the world that it seemed to justify the physical, natural, violent chaos of the water to flood and to start over again. And Noah and his family, Noah and his ark, Noah and the animals were the beginning of that new beginning. Now, in 1 Peter, you'll find that Peter is writing to new Christians, mainly Gentile Christians, and telling them that they too are in a new ark, and it's called the church. The church has been a symbol or has used the ark as a symbol of itself in the raging chaos of this life. And for the new Christians, they have been separated from their old life, both physically and spiritually, and have been rescued into a new life. The question is, are they going to continue in that new life? Are they going to continue in the covenant and the mercy that God had showed them? Will they be part of the building of a just world? And it is part of our choice even though we know that deep within us, in humanity, we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We need to be part of that rescue because they are reminders that God has not forsaken us. God is still walking with us. We don't know the whys and the wares of the flood, but we do know that we can look to a God for rescue. Whether it be in this life or the next, God is the author of life through Jesus Christ. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.